beard. I was taught this is who are called at home are not very tall, but I was called the big one, and she was called the yeah. little one. Take care of the little one. <clears throat> and I took that very seriously, especially in concentration camp, mm -hmm. that I was the one to protect her, and I was ready to protect her with my life, in fact, even die with her. So I, I kept, that kept her alive because I was protecting her. Mm -hmm. I had to stay alive in order to protect my sister. So she so was, was the she, by living and by being with me, she was keeping me alive because I had to be there for her. Mm -hmm. Did so she want to keep living? Was her will as strong as yours no. was? No, it wasn't. She was, uh, she was afraid, one of the special stories is that she was afraid that not actually to die, but the, the route to, to the death, to the gas chambers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time, and she was going sadder and sadder all the time. And I noticed one day, and I didn't know what I'm going to do about it. So it's going to be a big selection. I said, I said, and she was be being so sad, so I said, I thought of something, and I said, well, you know something, I said, oh yes, she said, you, you look a lot better than I do. You walk straight, and you take, still care of yourself, even if you are there, and you're going to survive, but I won't. So I told her, I made an oath, I said, pretend this is a holy book, and our parents are standing right here, and I swear to you, I said, in front of them, and God, It's very, it's a very moving story. I'm sorry. But that's okay. But anyway, and I, and I meant to, I said that if we are chosen, I'm going to die with you, I'm going to go with you, so you won't have to go to the guest chamber. So mm -hmm. She said, but what if they don't choose you? I said, well, I'll do anything I can. Mm -hmm. If I have to slap the assessment, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And then so, he throw me with you. So her life became more important than yours. She was a completely different person after this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was still in Auschwitz, and it was still hardships and everything, but she just wanted to live more then. You watch people dying in front of you when you watched soldiers hitting people and you were in unclean conditions. I mean, how do you go on? I'm not sure I have really the answer for this one because I have said it to myself so many times. I'm asking myself that question. Mm. And I said, why? How, how did I do it? And how could I? I sometimes have a hard time believing if I think of the details of everything that happened. How could I have the courage to do this and to this? I, I just, I don't know why I deserve a miracle. I don't know, but it's something. I felt that my mom was always with me, my parents mm. were there, and they were just protecting me. Speaking of miracles, I know Heather talked about this, yeah. and you've talked about this, that several times you escaped death by narrow margins. <laughs> Very narrow margin. Every survivor did, believe me. Talk about that and, and talk about how you escaped death and also why you think it happened. I have no answer for that. I don't have a straight answer. I just can tell you the fact. I'm puzzled by it myself because I, I can't have the answer. The one example is that I was, I call it an escape within the walls of Auschwitz. Everybody heard about Dr. Mengele. Who did the experiments on they, humans. That's right. He chose... Uh, uh, 100 people, one after roll call, there is that uh, uh, camp road, and we are standing roll call. It was 100 people put aside. Everybody went into the, to the barracks, and we are sta standing there. And you were there. one of the 100 people? I was one of the 100 people, and he chose 50 from the 100 for something. And we were put in a separate And you were one block, of the 50? One of the mm -hmm. 50, and my sister, too. Mm -hmm. And we went back for a couple of days later. We were put in a room that's called sauna. I'm not going to go into details, but that's a room where you change the clothes and getting clean striped dresses, a white apron and a white head, uh, and throw down on a pile 50 dirty clothes. And then we crossed with people were standing roll call on this side. We crossed the road to the other side. There was Dr. Mengele's office. We were all called into the office. There was a lady there and putting our, all our names down mm -hmm. and our numbers down, which we had on the left mm -hmm. arm here. And uh, suddenly we came out and we're standing in five, rows in five to just the 50 of us. And there is a prominent person. What I mean by prominent, she was, while well, everybody was standing roll call, she had a piece of paper in hand, she was walking around. So she was either a scribe or a block elder or a room elder, something important position that she could walk around with that list. She had that list for Dr. Mengele. And she picked out one of the girls and took her with her. I said to Danka, I said, 
this is something bad because we were hoping this was something uh, we were chosen for maybe after a whole year, more than a year working in the burning sun and in the winter. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were chosen something we're going to have a roof over our head. Mm -hmm. It's time because we maybe not going to survive if it just mm -hmm. goes on like this. And so we were happy we were there. But when I saw this, I said, that's not good news. If she's picking out somebody, I don't know if it's her cousin, her sister, or whoever, that means this is a bad idea. I said, and I want to escape, go back to the sauna, cross over the how, road. How could you escape? I said, we're going to cross over the road. It's an insane idea, and I don't know why it worked. You just got out of line. I, of the 50 standing there, she took out one, so it's 49. I said to Danka, we go to the other side, to the zona, and I pick up the clothes. I pick them up, you undress only, and I give you the clothes yours and the 50 pile of clothes and mine. And I swear to you, this, and she said, no, I don't want to go. I said, Danka, I made an oath to you before that selection, remember? And I told you I'm going to die with you, but I'm not going to die willingly like this, oh. to give up like this. If you are chosen to die, I go with you. But this one, we are not chosen yet. Let's try it. We've got nothing to lose because if it's Dr. Mengele, I have an idea that could be that this is for experiments. So I got her hand. She finally didn't say no anymore. I grabbed her hand and I walked just straight up like I was a very important person to the other side of the where there was a standing roll call. In back of them, to the sauna, found the clothes, hers and mine. She only took off her clothes. I, she was shaking like a leaf. I had to dress her too and dress myself. We walked up, make the long story short we went out and then we had to go on the roll call and fit in with others so i pushed up one person and then i held her hand and i pushed up another person and here we are standing and everybody started pushing up and they got confused in the front lines mm -hmm. the ss were counting mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. happened they mm -hmm. didn't found us dr mangela's mm -hmm. list you see if i knew the person who took out that other person i would know how she got out now i have mm -hmm. an assumption that when she took out and she noticed that the only 47, she may be struck the, uh, from so the list. Fate. It was just luck. I have no idea. And luck, unbelievable. That's an escape from Dr. Mengele and in Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. It's unheard of, but it's happened to us.